Well, welcome along today. Um, the reason why, well, there's a few reasons I feel why not as many here today. Uh, one is that uh, um, there's nearly 50 people up or 60 people up with Mary in, in the seminars up at uh, Butterham. Um, she's running two workshops today. There's, uh, and so there's quite a few helpers who are helping with that as well. So there's, there's a workshop running in the downstairs room and there's a workshop running in the upstairs room at Butterham today. And last yesterday as well. And so that's why some, quite a few people are there. And then I think uh, also I'm not sure what you guys at Brisbane want to do with regard to presentations, but do you like having a presentation available at Brisbane rather than having to travel up to Butterham? So what, what's probably going to happen in the future? Uh, next month, next month there probably won't be any presentation here in Brisbane, but the following month there will be. So that'll be in August, and it will be the same time, same in that Mary will be running uh, some presentations up at Butterham at the same time. So, um, and then after that we don't know what we'll be doing. So we haven't really decided after that what will be happening, and it will depend on your desire as to how frequently we get down to Brisbane to do these presentations. Today I was going to discuss the subject of the law of cause and effect. Um, but uh, but um, I'm also happy to have a question and answer session with you if you'd like that. So it just depends on what you would like as to what you get today. What would you like? Uh, <laughs> Well, the trouble is the law of cause, the law of cause and effect presentation will take all of the time if we go with it, um, and I'm perfectly happy to answer questions about it. Um, but the questions will have to be specifically on the subject that we're discussing. That's all. If I leave it open to question and answers, then it gives you the opportunity to ask questions on any subject, which is uh, it's really up to you which one you would like. So, who prefer question and answers? Right. I'd say it's less than half. Who would prefer? Who would prefer law of cause and effect? <laughs> and who doesn't care which way they go? <laughs> uh, there's a lot of laissez-faire people here. Um, was it case sera, Whatever will be, will be. <laughs> yeah. Um. Who doesn't care and who... <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, it's okay. Um, who would like to handle this mic on this side uh, for us? Uh, just, uh, just use the mute on and off button, the one that's exposed. You just turn... So at the moment it's muted if you turn it off when you give it to people. All right. Uh, well, I think I might do the law of uh, cause and effect another time then um, because I feel... It's quite an important subject, um, understanding the difference between the law of cause and effect and the law of compensation. But to just give you a bit of an introduction in terms of uh, um, some questions that you might like to ask on that subject or others, what I'd like to do, a lot of people have uh, sent me emails about the difference between the law of cause and effect and the law of compensation. Now, does everyone here know what I mean by the law of compensation? You're allowed to not know. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, let's compare the two laws, shall we? We've got the law of compensation. And then there's the law of cause and effect. All right. So what we want to do is compare the two laws. Law of cause and effect, is that the same as the law of attraction? Uh, no. Uh, there's a, a completely different, actually. Can you explain that too? <laughs> sure, okay. Um, so the question asked, was that on? I don't think. No, it didn't sound like it was on. Testing, testing. You That's just got to get close. Okay. Um, yeah, the law, the law of attraction is... Uh, is a, is very similar to the law of cause and effect in the way in, in, in on upon which it operates. 
whereas the law of compensation has some very, very specific things uh, involved with it. So I'd like to talk about the law of compensation a bit first. Right? The law of compensation, firstly, it operates upon, upon the human soul. It doesn't operate upon anything else. So it's one of the highest laws of the universe. It's a part of the natural love laws. And remember, the natural love laws are only superseded by the divine love laws. So remember, when we discussed a hierarchy of laws, there was firstly the physical laws, and then there were the metaphysical, or what people call the, spirit, the spiritual laws, the metaphysical. So, so the physical laws of, uh, operate upon the physical universe, our physical bodies and all, and all of the other things in the physical universe. The metaphysical laws all operate upon the physical universe of the spirit world, if you like. Therefore, they operate upon a spirit body and everything else in the spirit world. Then there's uh, a whole layer of laws that are soul-based laws. And they only operate upon the human soul. They don't operate upon any other being in the universe other than the human soul. And the soul-based laws are higher in nature than the metaphysical or physical laws. Now, the first section of soul-based laws are what you'd call the laws of natural love. In other words, the laws about love in terms of when you are being loving to somebody else and when somebody else is being loving to you. And, of of course, the... the uh, the, the law of compensation revolves around the penalties if you're not loving. And when I say the penalties, the, the damage that's done to your own soul or to the soul of another person if you aren't loving. And they are all basically soul-based laws and they are all laws of natural love. And then there's the soul-based laws of divine love. So we'll put that as... the uh, And the divine love laws all operate also upon the human soul and no other being. So that all the laws of divine love operate upon the human soul and they're all about the connection between your soul and God's soul. So yourself, the connection between yourself and God. So these operate between the connection between yourself and God. These operate uh, between in, on the connection between yourself and other people. And these operate upon the physical part of your spirit body, which is your spirit body, the spirit, what you call your spirit body, and what a lot of people call spiritual, is really metaphysical. It's still a physical body, but it's a spirit one rather than a material one. And then the physical laws all operate upon the, mater the physical world. So, so you've got a hierarchy of laws, if you like. Now, the law of compensation operates upon this level, at that level. So in other words... It operates upon the human soul and it's to do with the laws of natural love and when the laws of natural love are broken. Does that make sense? The law of attraction um, operates in a more general sense in that it operates upon all of these laws. It encompasses all of those areas. So the law of attraction has... There are certain attractions in the physical that occur due to the law of attraction. So, for example, magnetism is a law of attraction at the physical level. Does that make sense? The way your cell structure in your body uh, stays together and, and is maintained is all about a law of attraction between the soul and the physical world. So these are all things that are physical in nature and therefore the law of attraction operates upon or has its scope of operation, if you could think of it as that, upon all of those different areas. Whereas the law of compensation doesn't. The law of compensation is specifically operating at this layer, the soul-based the soul based level, the law of natural love. And, and as a result of that, um, it is a higher law in the sense that it would determine your happiness to a far greater degree than the law of attraction. So that means that the law of compensation needs to be taken into account if you are unhappy. Because a lot of unhappiness is the result of our law of compensation at work because we've been acting out of harmony with love. So, for example, let's say, let's say I'm in a relationship and the relationship is, is pretty uh, topsy-turvy, you know. I'm not that happy in the relationship. 
well, there's only a couple of things that can be going on there for me in the relationship and they'll be related to the laws of love being broken at the soul level in the relationship. So whenever I break or my partner breaks a law of love, then what will happen is the law of compensation will kick into effect and there will be automatic soul-based pain in the relationship. Does that make sense? So that's very, very different than the law of cause and effect because the law of cause and effect operates again like the law of attraction. It has its scope of operation in all areas of the universe, physical, the spiritual world or the metaphysical world, but also the soul-based uh, world as well. The law of cause and effect has its operational scope in all of those areas. Whereas the law of compensation only has its operational scope in one area, which is the second highest hierarchy of laws that God has created, the human soul-based laws. Does that make sense to everyone? A lot of blank feelings coming from the audience about that. So, so can you see how, like every law that God creates, has certain specific scopes of operation? It operates upon something. And, and many of the laws operate upon the entire universe in every area of the universe, in every what you would call layer. So these are all dimensional layers, if you like, of the universe. So you've got the physical dimensional layer, you've got the metaphysical dimensional layers, of which there's 21 of those, and then you've got the soul-based dimensional layers, uh, which are still being created. And the law of cause and effect and the law of attraction uh, are laws that operate in every one of those areas, or every one of those universes, if you like. But the law of compensation operates specifically only on the human soul. It doesn't operate upon animals, and it doesn't operate upon birds, and it doesn't operate upon you know, insects, and it doesn't operate upon you know, the, the celestial you know, physical bodies like the moon, the sun, and so forth. It doesn't operate on any of those things. It only operates on the human soul. Does that make sense to everyone? That's the law of compensation. There's another law, like called, um, and which is a law of a divine love, called the law of repentance, and that also only operates upon the human soul. It doesn't operate upon any other part of the universe other than the human soul. And the highest laws that God created all operate upon the human soul. But the law of repentance is a law re linked to the law of divine love, the laws regarding divine love and as such are higher than the law of compensation in their operation. So in other words, if you're not sorry for what you've done at the heart level, then you will have to pay for what you've done to the nth degree until it's completely paid for. Um, that's what the law of compensation will demand of you. Whereas the law of repentance says, if I am sorry, completely sorry in my heart for what I've done and I'm repentant, I don't want to do it anymore and I really have a feeling about that inside of my heart, then God's love can flow into you and take away the law of compensation operation on your soul. And what that means then is that the law of repentance is greater in its operation than the law of compensation. So all the laws have a hierarchy of operation, every one of them. And the highest possible laws are those that operate upon your soul they're the highest laws of the universe. And they are the ones where most of us are totally unaware of and they are also the ones that cause the most unhappiness for the human soul. So as people, it's because of our lack of awareness of the laws of love that causes the majority of our own unhappiness. Right. Now, just to give you a, an example of that, if I have a disease. Let's say I've got a disease like maybe heart disease. Right? Well, heart disease is actually something that is being demonstrated in my physical body. So you could say there must be a law of cause and effect operating with regard to this heart disease. In other words, the effect is the heart disease and there's got to be a cause. Now, Unfortunately, with the way people on earth work is that we assume the cause is, oh, I've got a blocked artery and, I've, you know, like my body just isn't functioning properly and I've been eating too much cholesterol and, and all of those kind of things. 
Um, but the problem with that kind of thinking is that it doesn't address the cause. It just addresses the effect. There's a reason why you eat the wrong food. And the reason is actually got a cause. Does that make sense? And it's not that that food's got a lot of cholesterol in it. There's a reason why you like food with a lot of cholesterol in it. But who goes for butter rather than margarine? Uh, most people do, don't they? Just about. So why is that? Because there's something inside of their body demanding it. There's something inside of them emotionally demanding it. And our body just responds to our emotions. So, so at the end of the day, you could say that the heart disease is the effect of some other cause. And if I find what the cause is, then I'll cure the effect, whatever the effect is, whatever disease I have. Now, everything that happens to our physical body is the result of some cause. Even when you have an accident, it's the result of some cause. But the cause isn't that you were in the wrong place in the wrong time. You see, God made a perfect universe and you're always in the right place at the right time. Even if you have an accident in that place, you're in the right place at the right time. Because God didn't create an imperfect universe. So everything that happens in the universe is perfectly operational. So that means that if I have an accident, even if an, the accident causes my death, there is a loving underlying cause for that accident, and that is one of law, God's laws. So everything that happens to me has a loving cause in the sense that everything that happens to me is the result of either my living in harmony with the law of God or living in disharmony with the law of God. The problem for the human race is the majority of us don't know what most of God's laws are, so we don't know how to live in harmony with them. But ironically, there is a measuring system, a feedback system, particularly for these laws. There's a feedback system, but for all of the laws, the feedback system is, is pain. So, so with every law, the, the result of its breaking, uh, of it breaking is some pain at some level. So for example, let's look at the law of gravity. The law of gravity is a law that only affects the physical, uh, location in which we live, right? It affects not just the human body, but also every other thing that has mass. So the law of gravity is effect, and, and even if we're in deep space, there are gravitational pulls affecting us, although they might be very slight, they're affecting us. So the law of gravity does have an effect everywhere in the physical universe. Now let's look at what happens when we break the law of gravity. Now to break the law of gravity, it's just a matter of being in a place that's high off the ground, should we say, and we fall and we fall too far for our physical body to cope with the trauma of it. And we've broken the law of gravity in some way. So just my getting up here, I'm not breaking the law of gravity yet, am I? I'm, I'm potentially going to break the law of gravity. And then as soon as I jump off, I'm now attempting to break the law of gravity, but because it wasn't very far, it's not going to have very much effect on me. But if, if this was the side of a 10-storey building and I just jumped off, obviously uh, it would have a lot larger effect on my body. So that's the law of gravity. The law of gravity, when I break it, causes some physical pain. It's telling me that actually you went too far here. And you went so far that your own physical body could not co cope with it. Now, there might be a number of reasons why I broke the law of gravity. One might be that uh, somebody pushed me over the edge of the building. And the other one might be that I jumped. In other words, I committed suicide. And the other one might be that I accidentally fell. So I was on a ladder or something like that and I accidentally fell. Every one of those situations, you broke the same law, the law of gravity, and there will be an effect in every one of those situations of breaking the law. There will be an effect. That's the law of the physical. But with those things I mentioned, if I chose to break the law of gravity knowing that it's what its effect would be, in other words, if I jumped off a 10-storey high building hoping to die, there's a soul-based law now that kicks into it. And the soul-based law is about the sanctity of life. 
And as soon as I break that, so I'm not only breaking the law of gravity now, which caused my death, which I might have felt would is a good thing, right, if I'm suiciding, but I've also broken a soul-based law, a soul-based law of the sanctity of life. And the soul-based laws always have a law of compensation uh, effect. In other words, they will always have an effect on the soul that damages a soul that needs to be released in some way for breaking them. And that's what the law of compensation demands. So the law of compensation is not the same as the law of cause and effect. And the law of cause and effect is not the same as the law of attraction. They're all very different to each other. Does that make sense? That's just a brief outline. I'll give a talk about the law of cause and effect in completely and you can get a picture of what it is. So the key is though, these are the laws, these laws that are soul based about the law of divine love or the law, remember this one was the law of natural love. The laws that are, that are soul based are the ones that cause any of your unhappiness if you break them. Whereas the metaphysical and physical laws don't cause uh, much or any unhappiness so as much if you break them, unless you break them that, in a way that creates a soul-based law being broken as well. So for example, with the law of gravity, if I break the law of gravity and, and it's an accident, there is very little effect on me actually personally um, in terms of uh, my personal harm. I'll die and while people might say that's a big effect, I'm saying that's a little effect. Um, you'll pass and you'll be in the same condition you were before you passed and you'll have a spirit body that you can utilise, the same as you could utilise your physical body and, uh, and you'll also have uh, available to you many other um, things uh, that you don't have available here on earth uh, in terms of constraints. So you'll have, for example, the ability to move from place to place with your thoughts, for example that you didn't have when you were here on earth. And so just physically breaking the physical law is not a major drama, really, unless it's purposeful. Because when it's purposeful, you didn't only break the physical law, you broke also a soul-based law. And that is a very, very different process from a soul-based perspective of what's going to happen to you in the future. And there will be a law of compensation requirement upon that law of that law upon your soul. So, so the beauty of all of God's laws is if you focus on the ones that cause you the most unhappiness, you can become happy very rapidly. But if you focus on the laws that are physical or metaphysical, you will not be happy very rapidly. Does that make sense? You want to ask a question if we... Uh, Can I have the mic? Sorry, 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 sorry. I just want to check the other one, sorry. Yeah, somebody's turned it off. Yeah. Is that right now? That's it. Um, just with that, if you... Um, I can see that with that example, but what if you... Um, accidentally fell and were left paraplegic or quadriplegic, I could see that that would be the cause of great unhappiness to someone. Um, if you fell, for a start, if you fall off of a building or you have any accident, it's really, there is a soul-based law of attraction event going on first. So it's not just the law of gravity that's being, a, that created the event. Does that make sense? So uh, the way God's laws work, is that it's very, very hard for, for any person to just be breaking a physical law, right? Just be breaking a low-level law. For example, let's have a look. I have an accident. Why, why do I have an accident? Well, there is a, firstly, there's a law of attraction. So there's an attraction occurring based on my soul condition, right? That created the accident in the first place. So, for a person who's become a paraplegic through an accident, there's got to be some soul conditions going on, an unreleased 
emotion in, in their soul from their childhood that's created this, this trigger of the accident. Does that make sense? And if they, if they dealt with that emotion, they would no longer feel unhappy and ironically, their body would probably recover from the accident completely. So your body is totally able to recover from every accident. You are able to heal a person with paraplegia. If you, so for example, if you're in harmony with God's love all the time, in other words, at one with God, you are able to heal a person who has, paraplegia, who has, who has any form of paraplegia. Does that make sense? Any form. So, so if that's the case, then it means that having a result, a negative result from an accident, has to do with something being out of harmony with love in the first place, inside of the soul of the person. Does that make sense? Or inside of the soul of others that are being affected by the event. So even for an accident to occur, there has to be a law of attraction operating upon the soul condition of the individual before the accident occurs. Now, now what I'm saying is if you could isolate the soul condition, if you could put the soul condition aside from one side, from a moment and say the person has a perfect soul condition, and then they fall off a building. Now, would those two events even occur? No. Probably not, right? Because it's impossible, really. But, but if that could happen, then you'd only break the one law, which is the law of gravity, and it would have no effect on you emotionally. Because emotionally, um, you'd be fine with it. Does that make sense? You wouldn't even feel the pain of it, actually. Right? But what, where the pain comes from is the soul condition that created the event. That's where the pain really comes from. And the soul condition creates a law of attraction which then is the cause of an event and that causes the effect which is there to help you address the soul condition. So one of the things I would feel if I, if I fell and became a paraplegic was maybe one emotion I would feel would be feeling confined and powerless. Well, that would actually be the emotion that created the event in the first place. That would be one of the emotions that created the event in the first place. In other words, I didn't deal with a feeling of powerlessness, powerlessness from my childhood. Does that make sense? So, so you can't look really at any of God's laws in um, isolation. But can you see how a soul-based law, law of attraction, was operating upon a soul condition whatever the condition is, my fear of being powerless, that creates an accident, right? And the accident had a cause. The cause was not that I was in the wrong place at the wrong time, but rather there was something in my soul condition that attracted the entire event in the first place. Right? That was the cause. And there is, if I address the cause, then the effect can disappear, so if I address the cause, which is this powerless feeling and all these other feelings, then I can actually recover. And if I'm connected to God as well in the process, I can recover completely. So you could actually, if you were um, in the position where you were growing towards God and you were growing towards one with God and you were in, you know, involved in this process of receiving divine love, you could actually have an accident because you're still not perfect you could have an accident, that accident could cause a physical problem in your body which you personally can heal by becoming at one with God in the process, by actually addressing the underlying soul emotion that created the accident in the first place. There's a lot of feelings of confusion. So talk to me about them. What's the feelings? Far away. And that's been turned off again. There's only one switch you need to touch, can I? No, not that one. Not that one. On. Leave it like that. Don't don't switch that plastic thing across. That's okay. I'm thinking about children, yep. and and I understand you know, that it's not a small child's law of attraction. So whose is it? That's what I'm wondering in some circumstances, like often it will be the mother. But I'm just thinking about like the work that I did for a long time. Yep. He, with, he is the child. Yeah. Who's in the child's environment? 
You've got the mother's emotions. Yeah. You've got dad's emotions. Who else? Could be grandparents. Could be some grandparents could, around mum. Yeah, could be step And grandparents around dad. Step parents. Or step parents, couldn't it? Any of those people? Yeah. All right. Now, all of these people will be affected by what happens to this child in yes. some way. Right? Who else is involved in this child's law of attraction? Siblings. Siblings. So there could be some brothers or sisters involved in the process. Right? Who else is involved in their environment? Teachers. Okay, so we've got some teachers. Right. Can you see who else is involved in their environment? There's, there's spirits with every one of these people. <laughs> Right, some of which are malevolent, some of which are benevolent, but but either way, there's spirits there. So every one of those has an attachment of different spirits. Now, every single one of those persons goes to create that child's emotional condition. And whatever happens to that child is a perfect reflection, because everything that God has created is perfect, Whatever happens to the child is a perfect reflection of all of those people's emotions and law of attraction. Does that make sense? So it's not so much the child's because the child is in this state hardly even using its own free will. Does that make sense? Mm. So it's the free will of all the people who control the child that are affected by the event. Yeah? So, so if the child has an accident of some kind, every one of those people, even the person who the healthcare professional who's invited into the life of this child now to look after the child has a law of attraction with this event. It's that precise. Every single person who ever has anything to do with that child needs to look at how they created that child's condition. So, so given, and, and I'm, I'm talking about, say, a small child, I'm thinking of a particular case where the child was under two and quadriplegic as a mm -hmm. result of an accident. Yep. So that you've then got many, many healthcare professionals yep. as well as... Every one of those healthcare professionals needs to look at their law of attraction. So you might have point whatever, tiny, tiny percentage of that environment who's actually have any idea that this is um, more complex than, uh, you know, than a road accident. But can you see so, how... Um, it's not more complex than a road accident, actually. It's the same... Well, Kind well, I mean, it's not a random, you know, it's not a... There, no, are, there are emotions involved. Totally. We need to see every event as not a random event. Yeah. The, the time you just slip and with your knife and cut your finger while you're chopping up the veggies is yeah. not a random event. None of them are random events. Yeah. Do you understand? Like, yeah. God's laws are perfect in every way, and therefore every single law operates perfectly. So if you've slipped and cut your knife, there's some, cut your finger with a knife, there's something going on. There's something emotionally that this event is being, was created by inside of yourself. And that applies to absolutely every single event. So, you know, a well popping in the USA, right, that's exploding huge amounts of oil, that also is a law of attraction for us here. Why? Because we get a video of it in our living rooms, right? And it has an effect on us here. Emotionally, so we were actually a part of the event's creation. Do you understand? Like that event, we helped create, right? And it was an emotion in us that helped create it. So you, this is a trouble with blaming anybody else <laughs> for a creation. Is that, and all we need to do is solve this. Is if each single person just looked at my own particular emotion that I felt with regard to any event that comes towards me then I'll resolve the underlying soul reason inside of myself as to why I, how I helped create the event. Does that make sense? That's the beauty of how the whole universe operates. Every one of God's laws is perfect. There is no accident. There's no accident. Ever. What, what I think I'm asking is, is, is there any, like, I understand that... As an individual, we can only deal with the emotions that we feel mm -hmm. about whatever event yep. we're attracted to be part of. Yep. But say in that, I mean, this is this is not my job any longer. But in that position, mm -hmm. can, there's no way that all of those people are going to deal with their emotions. Is there? 
can the child be helped by no. a how, couple of people dealing with their this, emotions? And this gets to the law of cause and effect. How can the child be helped if nobody who created the child's condition is willing to look at the reason inside of themselves as to how they created the child's condition? If they're not willing to address the cause, then how can you help the whole process? You can only help the process when everyone involved is willing to address the cause. Does that make sense? This is, this is why it's so important to learn the divine truth on the planet, because we all have a part in the creation of every event that actually comes into our sphere of operation. So as soon as you become conscious of an event, so let's say tomorrow, tonight, you're driving home in the car, why do you happen to be driving home in the car at that particular time, by the way? You know, there's all these things that we're, we're doing something because of a whole series of choices and decisions we make, right? And we're driving home in the car right at the moment the news comes on, the news flash comes on, and they just report that a, a, a lady who was 80 in her 80s or 90s just got raped and bashed to death by a person. Right? Now, this happened in Melbourne a couple of weeks ago. And I'm driving along in the car and I hear that. Now, the fact that I heard it means there's something in me that this event is triggering that I actually helped create this event with. Does that make sense to you? Just the fact that I'm hearing it right at that moment means that I have a part to play in this event. It's very important to understand this and it's very powerful once you understand it. I am playing a part. Now, how could I be playing a part in the event? Well, it could be quite quite a number of different issues. That lady might have been abused as a child and I am a person who overlooks my own abuse as that happened to me when I was a child. So I've actually put pressure on her through my denial of my own abuse, put pressure on her to deny her own abuse, which might have created a law of attraction event. Or it might be quite simple like the, the law involved. There's, there's laws involved with, with rape and then there's laws involved with child abuse. And I might be being confronted right at that moment of these different laws. Why are these laws there? What's going on? Why, how did the person finish up raping this person? I might have actually been a contributor through my own attitudes to the event. And we, the fact that we're hearing about the event means there is something about this event for us emotionally to resolve. Does that make sense? The fact that we're just listening to it on the news right at that moment means that there is something in it for us to resolve. And it's very important to understand this because if you understand it, you can actually take full control of your life through dealing with your emotions about every event. Does that make sense? Sorry? No, that's not the way to deal with the event. You see, you heard the news right at that moment because of a whole series of choices and decisions that were made at the soul level to get to the point where you heard. And so therefore, the answer isn't to not listen to the news. The answer is to actually deal with the emotion about the event. Because the emotion inside of me about the event was partially what created the event. Does that make sense? Now, my partial creation of that event is nowhere near as great as the murderers, who obviously has a much greater law of attraction involved with the event. But the fact that I heard it means that I am involved. And this is a very important thing to understand. Every single thing that comes into your life from any direction, in any place, in any time, is the result of a law of attraction inside of something, something going on inside of your own soul. Does that make sense? Uh, can we use the mic? Yep. Hi, I just had a short one. I was just saying, a good one for that is elections. You get what you vote for, don't you? <laughs> yeah, the, who we get is a result of a law of attraction for all of us, definitely. As the case with every single event. Now, now what we often do is we focus on the big events. So what we do is, well, wow, I had a car accident today. That was pretty hard. You know, um, I have both my legs broken. I'm now sitting in hospital with traction in both legs and, and, you know, feeling pretty sorry for myself and feeling like I made some stupid decisions today to get to that point or whatever. And there's a whole lot of emotions going on in me and I, and I notice that event. But do I notice the event where I just burned myself on the top of the stove? Because both events have a creation from our own soul 
and its own law of attraction. And if I'm willing to, the, the way to progress on the divine love path very rapidly is to notice every event. Right? Because if you can notice every event, you'll know and, and feel about it, you'll know what created it quite rapidly. If we go up the back, would you mind? If you keep your hand up. Thank you. Hello. With the child being the quadriplegic, or anybody for that matter, and you said it's affected by all of those people. Mm -hmm. So if a a member of the nursing staff caring for the child, Mm -hmm. if they deal with their emotions and their law of attraction related to that, will that then spread out into the rest or does somebody need to actually address maybe a, a healthcare worker that fact with family, with friends, with teachers, how they all? Well, the answer to your question is if I am the, if I'm a person involved, so that's, this is me and I'm involved in this event with this person over here, this child, let's say, right? So here's a child and the event was the child had an accident, but the child wasn't my child. It was somebody else's child. I'm a healthcare worker, but this is somebody else's child and this is me. And all of a sudden, I'm being asked now to help the child. Maybe I'm the doctor who's setting the leg, or maybe I'm the nurse who's, you know, giving the injection even, or maybe, you know, every single person involved in what happens to this child now is a part of this law of attraction event, right? Now, if I as an individual deal with my emotion, that automatically affects the person who I'm actually assisting right in that moment. Does that make sense? And not only does it automatically assist that person, but the emotion no longer being in me means that nobody in the universe now gets this emotion from me either. In other words, I am no longer a part of the creation of the event or future events that may occur that are similar. Does that make sense? So now I'm in a place where it's very, very powerful because I am firstly dealing with my own emotion, so that stops me creating these events straight away. Secondly, every single person who ever comes in contact with me at a soul level, not at an intellectual level, not with my words, but at soul level, is going to feel one less emotion from me, which means that they will be affected in their life one less, a portion less. Now, I have a choice as the helper to also start talking about how this works. Now that's obviously going to have even a bigger effect on every single person involved in the event. Does that make make sense? But even if I don't talk to anybody, just me dealing with the emotion means that the event, whatever future events are going to be created will be lessened by one person's emotion. Does that? Yeah, that's making sense. Um, Obviously if it's the parent that's clearing the emotion it has, a bigger effect on the actual healing of that child. Much greater because the child is emotionally connected to the parent. Okay. Yep. And based on all of that, I was came in and took some notes for some other people who aren't here about that you were having the meeting earlier. Yep. And you said that you didn't want to go down the health track. I feel that what you're teaching is highly powerful in healing and totally. healing is health, so you qualify for gift recipiency anyway. <laughs> but there's nobody on the planet who would accept that an emotion creates a health condition in the current in the current environment. Maybe we all need to start doing some stat decks. Well, maybe we all need to start yeah, dealing with our emotions, noticing the event, and then telling people about it, and eventually everyone will start understanding the power of the emotion on the condition. See, at the moment, at the moment, the work that I'm doing is, is going to have the most powerful effect on the human condition than any other work that could ever be done. This includes any work you choose to do with the soul. That's going to have the most powerful effect on every single thing that happens on the planet. Every accident is going to be affected by it. Every disease is going to be affected by it positively. You know, every pol- politician decision, every legal decision, every healthcare decision, all of these things are all going to be powerfully affected, I agree. But that doesn't mean the government at this day will recognise that as occurring. And, but the truth is, when you put it into practice in your life, you can, you can see it doing it. Like, that's the amazing thing about it, is that, is that these things I'm talking about are not theories. 
they are, you can put them in the practice completely and see it happening day to day life, see the changes happening. Yeah. So, for example, I'm there cutting away the veggies for a, for a meal and I start thinking about something regarding uh, myself and bang, I've cut myself immediately. Like, it's an immediate result. And straight away I notice, oh wow, there it goes again. I've, I've had things where, which I've shown you where my skin all of a sudden just cracks open for, some, for no reason. Well, there's always a reason. <laughs> there's always a soul-based reason. So the beauty of you dealing with the emotion as a healthcare professional, right, is that, is that you are definitely going to not only affect yourself, you'll affect every person that comes into your contact from that moment on in a positive way, if we use the mic. Keep the mic with you until... Yeah. Or may have come into your sphere. Yep. So in other words, you'll go out of business, but you'll be so healthy it doesn't matter anyway because you won't have soul poverty. Well, the truth is uh, you probably won't go out of business because actually everyone will start noticing that everyone that comes to you gets cured mm. when everyone that goes to everyone else doesn't, <laughs> and then so you probably have more business. This is the irony of the truth yeah. too, is that often we're worried about living in harmony with truth because we don't we won't have some kind of income, but in the end we get more income because there's a recognition at the soul level of the benefits of what we're doing. So, so when I first suggested to Mary, for example, that uh, to come and live with me, and she obviously, with three hours out of Brisbane, she obviously had to give up work. Now she was working as an occupational therapist. I don't re remember what she was earning, but she was working as an occupational therapist. The first thing that goes through her mind is, "But what do I do to eat?" You know, I will, and I just said, "Oh well, what we do, what I do is I just deal with my emotions, and and I follow my passion." And then what happens is I automatically get everything I need to eat. And Mary's going, well, what's this like? This just sounds like crazy. You're like, you, you, you're inviting me to come out with no money and no, and you, you know, what, what's your bank account? You know what I mean? <laughs> well, my bank account's zero actually. Uh, but, but I don't have a problem with that because every bill seems to get paid either way. Like, um, and this is the thing, is that when you operate in harmony with your desires and, and release the emotions that block the flow of everything in the universe towards you, everything automatically changes and happens. So, so that's the thing we need to bear in mind with, with this as well, like with everything in the health, health field, it's exactly the same thing. When we deal with the emotions that, that, that are caused by our condition, it's our soul condition that causes the attraction. So the law of cause and effect is greater than this, but part of the law of cause and effect is if I don't change the cause, the effects are never going to change. Have you noticed that there seems to be more and more accidents occurring on the planet? Now, people argue that it's because our, uh, the human race is actually uh, you know, larger, denser population, but that's not true at all. Like The truth is that if you look at it, over, over growing periods of time, you look at accidents over periods of time, you'll find that it actually is about soul condition. And if, if, if we can do a series of tests, and this is the thing is that there's, there's very few scientists that are willing to bite off these kind of tests, but, but if we're willing to do a series of tests, for example, a series of tests involving dealing with emotions and the effect that it has on accidents, dealing with emotions and the effects it has on cancer, dealing with a certain group of emotions and the effects it has on heart disease, and so forth, dealing with a certain group of emotions and the effects it has on asthma. Now, many of you have already started doing this and know that it works, right? Like, I know people who have had asthma all their life and then as soon as they started dealing with a group of emotions regarding grief and fear, the asthma disappeared completely. Right? So we do know that there is this relationship, but the problem is that we don't, it's all anecdotal. We don't we don't actually put it into practice because no scientist would be in their right mind at the moment would be willing to try the tests that would, would do this. But the truth is that these truths that I'm presenting to you will be demonstrable as truths in your own life if you put it into practice. So it has a huge practical benefit to every single person. So when you're talking about your soul condition and your emotions, this is the most powerful thing you can do for the planet the most powerful thing you can do. And then even more powerful than that is to speak about it. That was my next question, which I've covered again. with you before. Yeah. And you suggested then the most help we can give is actually instead of running around trying to fix everyone is to talk about 
how they can fix their emotion. Yeah, well, well, clear well no, them. the clear first the thing clutter. really is to fix your own through this process, <laughs> fix your own unhappiness through the process, notice yourself going through the process and understanding all the laws and everything, then you'll get to a point of confidence inside of yourself. Now, this, is, this actually works completely and when you're in that state, now you can help anybody in that same place to get to the same place you are and, and ironically you will also attract people automatically coming to you for that knowledge. That's the beauty of the divine truth. It happens just naturally. Yeah. So it's very powerful. Hi AJ. Um, How are you doing? I'm not doing very well no? actually. Um, part of me thinks I don't, wouldn't want to be talking to anyone so that they can see the end result, <laughs> you know, how, how things are happening for me at the moment. Yep. Um, I'm stuck somewhere and in a pattern and I just don't know um, what to do. But, yeah, I've got the cut finger and... Which side? Left? Left. Okay. And yesterday morning when I was making something, I put something hot in my mouth and the tip of my tongue blistered. Yep. And I mean, I'm completely enraged and frustrated. Yep. But I don't know how to get out of it. Right. Well, let's uh, so let's look at um. I notice that a lot of people are still in a lot of anger and rage, and um, there's a lot of resistance still in people generally, and. What we need to do is we need to be honest about our anger and rage. Right? Um, now, I know you have been, but let's go into it a bit more deeply about sort of anger and rage and how honest we need to be about it. Now, firstly, rage and anger, and I say this over and over, but it's very important, is a choice. Now... Why would I choose to be angry about something? So, you want to, uh, just Mike, where's the mic? Yeah. To deny your grief? Um, yeah, because we're taking an active action to do denial of something else, isn't it? What, but why do we choose anger? Because it's... Because it might not be denial of grief. It's one option. Because it's... When you're angry, are you usually blaming it on someone else? Yep, so can you see the step? It's blame. I want to blame others. Does that make sense? That's good. Any other reason you think of? Um, I've heard that anger is powerful. and. Okay, it feels, feels like I'm in control. In other words, powerful. Yep. That do for the moment? Yeah. Okay. So what Sol's just giving you is two things that we're often doing when we're making choices of anger. Firstly, choice of anger is I want to blame you rather than actually me deal with the underlying deeper emotion inside of myself. If I, if I want to blame you, I will blame you till the cows come home and even afterwards. Right? In other words, I'll even die and still be blaming you. And a thousand years' time, I'll still want to be blaming you for whatever happened. And there are literally people in the spirit world who you can speak with that for 2,000 years are still blaming me for things from the first century. Right? And just recently I had a chat with a few of them, um, men and women, who were blaming me for specific things. Some of the men were blaming me because I treated women too nicely. Right? And they felt that I was uh, a uh, betrayer of the male gender from the first century. And they're still blaming me for that right now. That's how long they would hold on to their anger about that issue. Does that make sense? So, so we can choose to blame others and stay in the state of blame of others for, for immense amount of times, in terms of period of time. And uh, no, I wanted to listen, but yep. I know I have a question coming up. Ask away as we go, because I'm discussing this with you. So, um, 
So when you choose to blame others, the choice to blame others is because you feel they are to blame. <laughs> it's quite simple. Like, why would I blame you? Because I, I feel like that you are to blame. I actually feel it inside of me. Now that's not a truth. You see, while I stay in a state of untruth, I will never get beyond this place, ever. I have to recognise the truth. What is the truth? The truth is, I am completely responsible for my own law of attraction, for my own attractions. In the sense that my soul condition is what is attracting it and who can change my soul condition? Me. Oh, nobody else can, can they? I can't feel your emotion for you. Can I? No. You might want me to, but I can't. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Now, the main, if you look at the majority of rage and anger on the, on the planet, it's all because we all don't want to take responsibility for our deeper emotions and what we want is somebody else to blame so that we don't want to feel it. Now, there's a number of reasons why we want to do that. One is that we want other people to feel our emotions for us. In other words... When we were young, we were taught that we're totally incapable of feeling and experiencing all of our own emotions, and so we finish up getting taught and we finish up believing that we need somebody else to feel our emotions for us. You know, this was easily created in me. You know how it got created? I'm there crying as a child, and all of, like I'm four years old and I just fell over, let's say, and I'm crying as a child, and the very first thing my mother does is she rushes picks me up and I was, oh, 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 this is, you know, and feeling her own or avoiding her own pain. She's, she's going, oh, poor, poor child, you know, and really nursing the child. And what's the child now doing is being suppressed from crying and it's being taught that actually mummy's going to share every painful event with me. That's what it's being taught, that she's going to share every painful event. Now, I'm not talking about caring for your child in a, in a practical way. I'm talking about sharing emotionally in a painful event. And so we're taught right from that time, oh, mummy's going to share every painful emotional event with me. I didn't feel like I had that. Well, yeah, the flip side is true. Though. You want you want people to share your yeah. painful events. I would, yeah, wouldn't does mind. That make, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. See, see, when we don't have it, we want it. When we do have it, we demand it. Either way, it's still a demand projected upon somebody else. Do, do you follow me? I guess... Um, I'm realizing some of the reasons I'm feeling so much fury and frustration. It's mostly work-based. I yep. feel powerless okay. at work. So, so let's look at the causal emotion. I'm in a job I don't like. Well, actually, I'm in a job I do like. I'm in oh. a job that... But why are you getting angry then? Um, I'm in a job where the people who are in charge, I've judged them and right. I feel obstructed in doing my job. So you feel like if you could do your job the way you wanted to do it, you'd be happy? Um, yeah, I, but I know that sounds arrogant, the way no. it's been phrased, but um, yeah, I think that I've brought intelligence to the role and the way, reasons I was selected for that job, I'm now prevented from exercising All right. those qualities. So let's be honest about what's going on. Whose law of attraction is this? Well, I mean, like everything you've said to me, in my head I know it. It's all familiar. Yeah. Yet still I'm making the wrong choices. Okay, well, let's go through this. So let's go through it again. Who's, who's law well, of attraction? Well, it's mine because okay. it's happening to me. So what are you attracting? So let's look at the attraction. What's going on? You've got obnoxious... How do you spell it? Something like that? Then, I mean... They're not obnoxious, they're just... Um, you tell me what they are. They're obstructional. They're ob yep. obstructing you? Yep. Um, same old story of my life, not, not letting me speak. Actually, in meetings, to do the projects where I'm the project manager, even though they're higher in me, and this is my first time in the public service, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they just talk over the top of me, and it's just like... I find that really um, difficult. Yeah, keep going. 
I also think that I've got a better grasp on some of the guidelines. I've been asked to, um, I'm, I'm in a funding body. Yep. I've been asked to uh, bend things, sign off on things. So which, you're asking, you're being asked to compromise? Yeah. You're being forced into compromise? Yeah, I am. I'd like to stand on my desk and tell them where to shove everything, but I don't because I'm scared. Well, that's anger. So let, so what you described there are a heap of things happening to you. Yeah. They're, they're what's happening, and they're happening because of... Uh, I wish... I just... I don't, look, obviously it's happening for me, but I just feel like... Yeah. Sorry, I feel so upset. Yeah, you see, I prefer the camera not to be on me as well. We, we don't. We don't need to go into judgment here, all right? And now you're going into judgment. Oh. All right. So just you don't need to go into judgment. Oh, we just God. need to be honest. Do you follow me? I just feel like everything. I feel like everything is just ramping up and so intense. The same old stuff. It's the same old pattern. Mm -hmm. And I. Can't seem to break through. I feel like the whole universe is kind of going. We're just gonna just ramp up, ramp up, intensify, intensify. It to, yeah, God's, to, a, God's just beautiful like that. And to, I feel like I must be close because I feel like I have to just break through. This is and very I must true. be close. You are very close. It's just like. <laughs> It's just so excruciating. I feel like if I had a gun, I'd shoot myself every night. Right. You can only do that once. <laughs> and, and after every that, night it I work. feel if I had a gun, I'd shoot myself. <laughs> yeah. So, so what's going on right now is firstly, the anger is to blame others. And then yeah. secondly, now you're going in to blame yourself. But both of these things don't help you. No, it's horrible. I'm having a rotten time. Yep, okay. So so let's look at what we need to do instead. <laughs> yes, <laughs> please. So so you, the truth is you can blame yourself for as long as you want. I don't you, want to. I just want to get through. Yep. And my suggestion to you is at this stage you don't want to get through just yet, but, <laughs> but let's look at some things. All right. You've got all of these things happening, right, in your work life in particular, right? Yeah. Yep. And... They all affect you, and the way they affect you is that you get in a rage. I do. Right. Now, remember that rage is the choice. Yeah. Why would you be choosing rage? Uh, because I don't want to feel something, because it's a habit. Because rage is a habit. What does rage get you? <laughs> Nothing in the end. <laughs> Exhaustion. But but there must be it must be give it getting you something, otherwise you wouldn't continue doing it. I don't do it at work. I mean I feel it. Yeah. I feel it, but I say things like when I have all this stuff piled on me, I say, Certainly I can do that, but it will mean that I can't do that. Are you okay for this priority to change? Whereas really I just want to scream obscenities at her. Right. So I mean I guess that counts as rage. Oh, I'd say so. <laughs> you see, whether it's just expressed, not expressed verbally. whether it's expressed or not, it's still rage, isn't it? <laughs> right. So, so there's rage there, and it's a choice. So we've got to admit there's a choice. Now, first thing to understand is that these things are happening to be, be me because of something in my soul. What is it? Well, well, firstly, you need to hear what I just said. These things are happening to me because of something in my soul. And this is very important for everybody to understand. Anything that's happening to me is happening because of something in my soul. Right? Not, not in somebody else's soul, my soul. So these, this event and this event and this event and this event, all these events you're listing are all about something going on in your own soul. Now, the fact that you're in a rage means that you don't want to accept that. You see, if I really accepted it was happening in my own soul, how could I ever get angry with another person? Can you say that again, please? If I really accepted that this was all created by my own soul, how could I ever get upset with another person? Because I don't like the feeling. 
and I don't want it to be happening. Ah, uh, see, see, no. What what you just said was you gave me an excuse, but not a reason. All yeah. Right. Let's look at it logically. If my own soul is creating these events around me, how can I ever get angry with other people about these events being yeah. created? Can you see logically? I can. So that not, not, don't go to the excuse just yet. Let's no. just look at the logic of what I've said first. Yeah, I can. All right? Yep. So, I, so yeah. So if you can see the logic, these things are inside of me and God's beautiful universe and beautiful laws are all getting these things triggered by these events. In other words, God's beautiful laws have all been set up perfectly to enable me to access the underlying emotions that cause these events. I've got a thought yeah. that I'd like to either take or dismiss so I can keep. Is this law of compensation because I've been a teacher, a high school teacher, and I've probably done this to lots of, of people? Well, rather, rather than work, trying to work out at this point what it is, yeah. what we need to do is work out why you're getting angry. Okay. Because can you see, like, I can talk to you about what the underlying soul cause of every one of these things are, but, but, but if we do that, we don't address the issue of why you're getting angry, do we? Yeah. So you think you're getting angry because somebody's obstructing you. You think you're getting angry because they're not letting you speak. You think you're getting angry because they're talking over the top of you. You think, you think that you're getting angry because you're being forced to compromise all the time in your job but actually none of those reasons are why you're getting angry. Those reasons, are, are all of these things are happening to deal with a soul thing inside of you. And, and why you're getting angry has got nothing to do with any of those things. Okay. Because why you're getting angry is a choice to blame somebody else that you want to make. Mm. It's got nothing to do with these things happening to you. The yeah. truth is I could make a list of a thousand things happening to you that you get angry about, right, let's say, and none of those things that we list would be the reason why you're getting angry. Because all those things could happen and you could not be angry about them. You could be getting into the deeper emotion instead, couldn't you? Yeah. You could be making that choice. So there's got to be a reason why you're getting angry. Can you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's independent of these events. Like logically it would lead that I don't want to progress or deal with what the actual soul issue is. All right, well, let's logically look at that comment. Yeah. Right. So what was the comment? Well, I, it's just from my head. I'm well, let's say it's from your head. Let's go with it. I don't want to feel yeah. those things. Well, no, I don't want to feel, I don't want to address the actual soul reason that I'm well, getting no, no, angry. No, 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 just stop for a moment. Can you see I don't want to feel those things? Like, yeah, I, yep, yep. Can you see it's actually yep, those things yep. that I don't want to feel? Yep. Like when somebody instructs me, what do I feel? What am I feeling? Like you're going to say rage again, <laughs> or like anger, frustration. But let's go under the frustration. Yep. What's underneath that? What am I feeling? Confusion. Confused? Why are you feeling confused? Because I don't understand why... Um, there's a breakdown in communication. I don't understand why these things are happening. Well, but I've already told you why they're happening. There's, no, a, there's I mean, an emotion inside of your soul. No, sorry, I thought when you're talking about the event of someone obstructing yeah, me. I am too. I'm talking about okay. the same thing you're talking about. I might about. be getting confused. Yep. In, See, yeah. See, let's look at this one thing. That event occurs. They obstruct you. Yep. Right? That, that one event occurs. I'm in a situation in a and you're wanting to go down a certain road and then that you get obstructed somewhere, right? Now, in that particular moment, what's the problem when you get angry? You don't want to feel that you're being obstructed. Yeah. That's the only problem. Because if you allowed yourself to feel that you're being obstructed, yeah. you wouldn't need to get angry. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. So, so let yourself feel that you're being obstructed. Not try yeah. to get out of it not try to control it, yeah. but just let yourself feel, ah, oh, another time being obstructed again, being stopped again from doing what I want to do. How does this feel? Feel it. Choose to feel it instead. 
You see, you're getting angry because you don't want to feel. This is this is using your own logic that you came yeah. up with. Um, I don't want to feel that emotion. Yeah. That what this event triggers inside of me emotionally. I don't want to feel it. Yeah. And because I don't want to feel it, I then will project blame at the person who did it. But that's not fair because I actually created this event yeah. to actually deal with an emotion inside of myself. Yeah. So you are willing to be unfair. Yep. So look at that. Pray to God yeah. about that. Yeah. I am willing to be unjust with everyone around me. Every time you're angry with somebody around you, you're willing to be unjust. Because, like, it's all to do with something inside of yourself that's being denied as to why you're angry. And so it's unjust to produce, to, to project it onto somebody else. So, alright, I'm, I'm, I, what I do myself, ah, I'm being unjust again. <laughs> I wonder why I'd be choosing this, right? What, what's the feeling? Like, so, um, I'll try and think of something. It's been a while since I've been that angry again. Uh, oh, here, here's an event from a few months ago. Um, Mary comes up and asks me how I feel. I start telling her how I feel, and she t tells me, and, and she basically doesn't listen to how I feel and tells me how she feels about how I feel. Make sense? And, and I got frustrated. I felt frustrated. So why would I feel frustrated with that? Somebody's asked me how I feel and I start talking and they're not listening to how I feel. They want to tell me how they feel, really. That was the whole point of them asking me how I feel. And I feel frustrated with that. Why am I frustrated with that? You might feel she doesn't care. She doesn't care. That's the truth. She doesn't care. In that moment, she doesn't care, does she? That is not just my feeling. The truth is she doesn't. <laughs> right? So she doesn't care. What do I feel? I don't want to feel that she doesn't care. I don't want to feel. How does this feel? Oh, no, you know, my own partner doesn't care for me. How does that feel? Uh, and I don't want to feel that. I don't want to come to accept that and cry about that. Does that make sense? And so you get frustrated instead. So it's just a choice. I didn't want to feel the, the truth of the situation, which was in that moment, Mary didn't care for me. Does that make sense? In that moment. Now, it doesn't mean she doesn't care for me all other times, but in that moment, she didn't care. And I felt that. And that's my law of attraction. Now, I can choose to get angry, and if I get angry, then I don't want to feel that she doesn't care. Does that make sense? So I'll tell her, you don't care for me, you know, and off, and off you go like that. All you're doing is projecting the blame at them for not caring for you when it was something in your own soul that needed to be released, that created this law of attraction event in the first place, where she didn't care for you, where you attracted a woman into your life that didn't care for you. Does that make sense to everyone? So, so I can, I, I can choose to feel the event, or I can choose to deny it. Now, why would I choose to deny it? Deny the event because it feels bad, and I don't want to feel it. I want to blame somebody else. I want to be unjust. I want other people to share in my emotions with me. Right? I want everyone to know how effing angry I am, you know, like how frustrated I am. Right? Why would I want that? Is it very nice? How does it feel when you're on the receiving end of that? Does that feel very nice? Then why would you think that it'd be just to give it? Right? So we need to look at instead of so instead of blaming ourselves and instead of blaming others. What we need to do instead is allow ourselves to make the choice to feel the emotion that is being triggered by the event. Does that make sense, Libby? Like, yeah? Now, if you allow yourself to feel that emotion that's created by this event and that emotion, you know, the event, this event and the emotion that it creates, you won't get angry. You will actually start seeing these emotions as beautiful events to help you get closer to God. That's how you'll see them. 
Are there any other tips for me? Uh, certainly. certainly. So let's go through a few more things. The reason why you get angry, let's look at it. We've identified one thing from a logical perspective that you don't want to feel. But I could not want to feel and still not get angry with somebody else. Okay. Couldn't I? Can you see I that? I, I've like, let's say, thought about that. <laughs> can you see that I could, like I could, I could say, and I don't want to feel obstruction in my life, so I'm just not going to feel it, but I don't have to get angry with you every time you obstruct me. Yeah. I could choose instead to never see you again in my life. Couldn't I? I could choose to avoid it some other way other than anger. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Right? So there's a reason why you choose anger. And it's not just because you don't want to feel. Because if you didn't want to feel, you could go numb, like a lot of people do. Yeah. You know, you could tune out and zone out and you could you you know, you could meditate for an hour or two a day and detune yourself from all this stress and that might be a way of managing it. Do you know what I mean? But why do you choose anger as a way of managing it? It's not just because you don't want to feel. It's got to be another reason. Can you see that? What's yeah. the other reason? Uh, well. What do you feel when you get angry? Like? Um, noticed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So when you come home and let everyone home have it because you couldn't let them have it at work? I'm um, trying not feel? to do that. Yep. Yeah. So how do you feel though when you're angry? So it's noticed. So when I'm angry, so, so anger gets me, what does it get me? Attention. Notice, being noticed. Anything else? I can only see the negatives of the anger. That's okay. What are those? Um, you're blamed. Sorry? You're blamed. You're not loved. You're isolated. On the receiving You're end. judged. Yep. No, when you're giving it as well. When you're giving it, you're judged. Yeah. Yeah. See, all of those lists that you're going, there is your justification for your anger. See, I'm confused because I just feel the negative impacts of it. So why would you choose a thing that you feel a heap of negative impacts of? Well, it's a pretty stupid choice. Exactly. exactly. So so there's got to be a logical reason why there, it's made. Yeah. And yeah. I don't know what it is except habit. Can, can you see, though, by saying, oh, I get judged, I get... What were the other ones you used? Isolation. No one wants to be around someone who's angry. Yeah. Judged, isolated. Blamed. Blamed. Misunderstood. Misunderstood. Now, do you think that's all just? Well, yeah. If do you really? Well, as it well, understandable. Like if I go and throw a big tantrum because I'm so furious and I'm not choosing to feel my my stuff and everyone doesn't want to be around me, then I think well. <laughs> like it doesn't feel good, but it's understandable, you know. Yeah, but what I asked is, do you think it's just? My actions. Yeah, well, you're basically saying, you're basically saying to me that you should be allowed to be angry and not get judged or isolated or blamed. No, that's no, not, no, not my intention to, to no, say that. No, this is, I'm, I'm saying a truth to you, Libby. Okay. Now. You do believe this. You believe you should be allowed to get angry and not feel any of those emotions. Not in here, I don't feel that. Yeah. Well, that's something big to have a look at. You feel that you should be allowed to get angry and still be loved. You should be allowed to get angry and still be accepted. Yeah. You believe that? Yeah. So even you're even blaming others for the results of your own anger. Can you see that? 
Yeah. So you're not you you're saying you're not saying to yourself, "Oh, I'm getting judged again." That's my own creation. You're more saying to yourself, you know, you're hurt that you're getting judged when you're angry. You're feeling hurt. Yeah, but I also don't want to be angry. No, you do. You do want to be angry. But I don't like it. But by the way, what I'm, the reason why I'm belaboring this with Libby is because the majority of you still getting angry are in the same place where you are totally justifying the reasons for your rage. Right? Firstly, you don't want to feel the underlying condition and emotion, but there's another reason which I haven't identified yet, notice, that's still there to be identified as to the reason why I'm willing to be angry. Because it, the truth is, if I didn't want to feel, I could just go numb, couldn't I? I could just go numb and when somebody does something, I just, you know, no response. I could choose to do that, couldn't I? Why do I get angry instead? There must be a reason, other than just that I don't want to feel. Does that make sense? So what was that again? To control. So I want to control. It to control and punish. Yeah. I I want to punish. And it's also to make others responsible for the stuff that I don't want to feel. I want someone else to feel bad. Can you see we're starting now to get to more what's really going on inside of anger? Like what's really going on is you, you want a number of things that you're not getting and it's not just because you don't want to feel the underlying emotion, it's because there's a lot of other things going on. And as Mary's related to you, Mary's had a lot of anger to work her way through. And a lot of her anger came from, comes from these particular emotions. And as she's worked her way through them, and she's probably better versed to talk to you about anger than I am because of her experience with it, with it, with dealing with these emotions, whereas I haven't had as much personal experience with dealing with these emotions. The, re the reason why, we, we, myself and Mary were talking about this this morning actually. Mary's actually going through an emotion at the moment about her identity and she gets very angry with anyone who raises the issue with her, right, including myself. So all I've got to do is in a group say, oh, uh, our mum Jesus or I've got it or this is what happened in the first century and straight away I get a projection from Mary of anger towards myself. Does that make sense? And and we started we, we've been talking a lot about why that happens. And a lot of it comes down to these to these feelings. These feelings are a layer on the top of I want someone else to pay for how I feel. I want somebody else to take responsibility for how I feel. I want somebody else to be able to be blamed for how I feel. I don't want to have to feel it myself. But, but, and I said to Mary this morning actually, that one of the biggest things we need to remember is that nobody else can feel what I feel. Nobody. No matter how much I want them to, nobody is ever going to be able to. And there's not an acceptance inside of you yet of that truth. There's a belief that somebody else can take it away from you or somebody else can fix it for you. Does that make sense? There's a belief there somewhere inside of your soul. There's a belief because if I fully believe that actually nobody can take away my feelings for me and the only way I can actually take away feelings from me is by fully experiencing those feelings, if I actually fully believe that, I would never project anger at you for something that you've said to me, done to me, hurt me with, even you know, cut me with or you know, any physical harm that you've brought to me either. I would never get angry about any of them. Does that make sense? Because I would have to look at myself in every single position. And, and this is the thing that we need to come to terms with. As yet, you have not accepted that belief in your soul. Does that make sense, Libby? Like It does. So in your soul, pray about this belief that needs to enter it, that only I can feel and release all of my emotions. 
Not a single person on this planet can do it for you. There's not a single spirit in the spirit world that can do it for you. And God can't do it for you either because God has given you free will to control your own emotions. So nobody can actually do it for you. Nobody. Yeah. And once I... And so, so in my own progression, what, ha- what happened is early in it, I came to terms with that, that I am actually the only person capable of dealing with this emotion that's inside of me. Nobody else is capable. I can talk to you as much as I want. That's not going to help me. The only person capable of dealing with this emotion is me feeling this emotion and experiencing this emotion, whatever that emotion is. Yeah. That's the only time it's ever going to be released from me. Now, that belief has yet to enter your soul. Yeah. Because you want to hold on to these things. I do. You want to hold on to control. You want to be able to punish the people who hurt you. Quite intensely. Yeah, yeah. And remember, um, oh, no, I shouldn't mention that because if anybody hasn't been to Mary's thing, it will be... There's a few exercises that you did with Mary's course. Um, I think you've been on it, haven't you? I was. Yep. And um, there was the there was an exercise with, with the... Uh, you remember the... I don't know if it was in yours, but it, was there an exercise with the... With with the um, putting the person in a cell, did you? In a cell. Yeah. No, we didn't do that one. You didn't do that one. Okay. No. Well, we'll I won't talk about it anymore because uh, because there's other people who haven't been to Mary's thing, but but it's a it's an exercise that's worth asking Mary about, yeah. um, and actually do that. But but often what happens is we want to control, we want to punish, we want someone else to feel bad, we want somebody else. You know, for example, let's say my father hurt me when I was young. I want him to hurt now. I want him to hurt now. And while I hold on to that, wanting him to hurt, I am not understanding one basic principle of my feelings, and that is that only I am capable of experiencing and releasing all of my feelings. So I can make him hurt as much as he, much as I want, and at the end of the day, my feeling will still be there. This is why revenge doesn't work. Right? I've lost sight of the of releasing the feelings. Well, that's because you're in this space. You don't want to release the feelings. You want someone else to do it for you. You want yeah. you want someone else to make it so that you don't have to release the feelings. Yeah. And God and nobody else is going to do that for you. And you won't and you're refusing to come to terms with that emotionally. Does that make sense? And the key with all anger is that if, the, if in the end I refuse to come to terms emotionally with the fact that only I can experience my own emotion and release it, nobody else can and nobody else is able to, if I don't come to terms with that emotionally, I will always be angry with somebody else. Yeah. Always. Right? So I need to at some point come to terms with this truth that only I... This this is not coming to terms with that truth. This is the opposite to that. That's, this is basically saying, actually, I can control my environment that, and make it easy for me, which is totally impossible. You can't control your environment ever. Right? And, you know, I'm allowed to punish a person for what they did to me. Well, that's not loving. Oh, no, I don't no. feel like I'm loving in the slightest. No, 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 it's okay. I'm not judging it. I'm just saying that action is not loving. No. If the action isn't loving, what's going to happen to your own soul? You'll be degrade. You're going to have pain. Remember, pain is the response of the soul who is not loving. Yeah. Right? So your choice to stay in this place right, is actually born from the, the inability to accept that only you can actually release all of your own emotions. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. So there's a basic truth that although it's hit your head quite a number of times, yeah. it is yet to enter your heart. Yeah. And that truth is yet to enter your heart. So pray about it. Pray about why that truth... Why, why do you want to control? Why do you want to punish? Why do you want to make other people feel bad? Let yourself feel those emotions. Does that make sense? And release them so that you get to a point where you can accept the truth that nobody else is capable of feeling your emotions for you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Um, does that make sense to everyone? No. Can I just have the mic there and then across to here? 
Uh, no, I was just ne next to you, uh, yeah, just there, and then down to Karen. Hi. Yeah, down to Karen. Hi, yeah, about releasing anger. Um, does it always have to be released physically in order to access the grief? Because I've found that, you know, sometimes that, that's the only way, but sometimes, like, in a situation like this, I find it hard, you know, if I feel angry about something, to, you know, go out and, you know, release it because I need my bed to punch on, yeah, I need yeah, my yeah. punching bag or whatever. Yep. Um, so can I just go, okay, what am I covering? And then just, you know, go, okay, I feel... Well, no, remember what I said to Libby, that anger is a soul-based, a lack of soul-based acceptance that you're completely responsible for all your own emotions, that only you can feel them. So, so anger is always the result of a blockage inside of yourself. Yeah. So while you need to experience the anger, you also need to address the blockage, right? So experiencing the anger isn't the only way, like isn't the only process you'll have to go through to not have anger anymore. What you need to do is actually, why do you have the anger? You have to address the why. Sure. Right? And the why is always usually about these things, wanting to punish someone, wanting to make somebody else feel bad, wanting to be in control of a situation, mm -hmm. you feel, you know, and you don't want to feel out of control, all of those kind of things. There is a mm -hmm. strong desire to involve somebody else in your emotional process. Right. Yeah. Okay. So all of your anger in the end comes from one thing, and that is your lack of soul-based acceptance of the truth, of mm -hmm. the divine truth of only you can feel your own emotions. Yeah. No one so else. if you don't want to use anger anymore, first find out what If you don't want to have anger anymore, why do I want to you be need angry? to address the reason why okay. you've yet to accept mm. that that truth that I just stated. Because otherwise you're always going to use anger. Yeah, you're always going to okay. use anger and you'll have to go bang 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 oh, bang and so eventually intense. you'll get through your anger and into grief, but you'll need to do it a 100 times for it. you'll need to do mm. it for every emotion. Mm. Does that make sense? It comes too much. And, and in the end, it's just going to be a very frustrating, <laughs> yeah. long-winded process. You're far better off dealing with the blockage as to why you cannot accept the truth that only you can feel your own emotion. Mm -hmm. Because most of us, what we do is we grow up not wanting to feel our own emotion. We're taught by our environment and our parents not to feel our own emotion. And we start making other people feel our emotions instead. Mm -hmm. Right? So, so why do I sit here in rage towards you? Because I want you to do something for me that I didn't want to do for myself. Yeah. That's the only reason why, really, in the end. Right? If I was willing to do it myself and willing to go through the emotion myself, then I would never get angry with you. And if I accepted inside of myself that only I can feel my emotions, then I would never want you to experience it, mm -hmm. ever. So yeah. I'd never get angry with you. As a result, does that make sense? Yeah. It so does. every time that I go out of that function, so you're not going to be perfect with this until you're one with God, right? But, but on the path there, we need to get to a point where we take full responsibility for every single emotional and every single event that happens in our life inside of ourselves. We feel it here instead of wanting others to feel it for us. Does that make sense? Mm. Now, now, whenever we don't do that, what we will do. The truth is, I don't want to feel something is not the reason for our anger. The truth is, the reason for anger is these kind of reasons. Because I don't want to accept that only I can fix my own emotion. I don't want to accept that. Why don't I want to accept that? Because a lot of times in my childhood, I was taught that I'm totally incapable of feeling my own emotion. Like, most children are not even allowed to cry when they, when they hurt themselves. You look what happens to most children. They hurt themselves. What does the parent do? Rush to their aid, pick them up, go, there, 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 don't cry now. You know? What's that telling the child? It's totally incapable of feeling its own emotion. It doesn't need to feel its own emotion. I'm helping you avoid your own emotion. And now what's the child going to learn? From now on, mummy or a mummy figure or daddy or a daddy figure is going to actually absolve me of my emotion. And it's totally impossible. The truth is that it's impossible for anyone to feel your emotion for you. Yeah. Nobody can. Nobody can feel what's inside of you for you. And what I, what I, from my own progression, what I had to do is come to terms with that very early on. That no, 
doesn't matter what anybody projects at me, doesn't matter what condescension I get, doesn't matter what, you know, anger, rage, whatever I get for whatever I'm saying, get all of those things, whatever is coming to me, only I can feel my own emotion about it. Nobody else can. I, I, how can you stand in front of an audience of 200 people and control them? You can't control what's coming at you. You can only deal with your own emotion about what's coming at you. Does that make sense? Yeah. Of course. And when you yeah. fully connect with that emotionally, you will no longer project anger and rage to anyone around you in your environment. Good to know. So there is a way to avoid anger completely. Mm. Uh, yes. But for most of us, we have to go through the process of feeling it a bit first and feeling it a bit more first and allowing the anger first and then getting into grief or whatever until we come to the realisation that actually I am able to feel all of my own emotions. Most of us do not have a belief that we're able to cope with feeling our own emotions. Most of us instead have a belief that, that we're totally incapable of feeling our own emotions. We, we have a term for it in English, in fact, We've created a term for it. You know what it's called? Overwhelmed. What does that imply? That I can't cope. We're actually taught that when I'm overwhelmed with emotion, I'm now not in the place where I'm coping. Right? Even the language tells us that we can't cope. Because we, we, when we're overwhelmed, we're not able... We feel that being overwhelmed, as the term goes, is the place where um, I'm no longer in control. Right? The truth is, when you're, there's, the truth is, from God's perspective, there is no such thing as you being overwhelmed. No such thing. God created you to perfectly experience every single emotion that's inside of you. God created you to do it, and only you. Nobody else can do it for you. And in fact, nobody else can even understand you when you do it. <laughs> to understand you, they'd have to be you, your personality, your background, your history, your life in the time frame that you had it. And there's not a single other person in the universe that's in that place that you're in right at this place and point in time who can actually feel your emotion for you in that manner. Not Even your soulmate's totally incapable of feeling your emotion in that manner. Does that make sense? Only you can feel your own emotion. Yeah. And when you believe that here, you will stop being angry. Good. Thank yeah. you.